Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to you and Senator Murray for holding this hearing, and thank you all very much for being here to testify and for the work that you're doing in your states. I'm thrilled that Dr. Pierce is here from New Hampshire. She heads, as she said, a, a recovery center in the Lakes region of New Hampshire, which has been particularly hard hit by the epidemic. And I, I wanted to, I know that you wanted to respond to the question about what what difference has Medicaid expansion made for treatment? Can I get you to do that? Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you for that question. So as a recovery community organization, we um, are a local nonprofit, so we're always thinking about revenue sources. And with the Medicaid expansion program, we've been able to now um, become certified at the national level and at the state level, so we can begin billing Medicaid as part of Medicaid expansion for recovery support services. So these are for non-clinical um, services that are provided by peers in recovery themselves. So we've created a system in which someone who with lived experience, who's in long-term recovery, can become a certified recovery support worker. They actually have a profession, they get a certification at the state level, and their work giving back to their peers is now billable through Medicaid. Um, also through Medicaid expansion, Recovery community organizations like Navigating Recovery are part of the integrated delivery network system in New Hampshire. Um, and through that integrated delivery network system, we've been able to have incredible levels of care coordination. We focus mainly on um, people with substance use disorder and high utilizers of the emergency department. And we, through that, we now have technical assistance that allows all community service providers to have a shared coordination care plan, which means that when somebody that we work with ends up in the emergency department, we're immediately notified. Um, if that person is also working with their mental health clinician, that clinician is notified. Their primary care physician is notified. So we are all on the same page about where that person is at in real time, and we can um, you know, have intervention in that moment. Um, one of the things that several people mentioned is the importance of the recovery services that are available. I think one thing that um, we are now beginning to recognize, and I know everybody here understands this, but that um, substance use disorder is a chronic condition. It's something that has to be treated throughout your whole life. So can you talk about how important those recovery services are to people as who may have gone through maybe getting medication-assisted treatment and other treatment plans, but who really need the services that come through recovery centers. So recovery supports are provided um, before, during, and after treatment. So it allows somebody to establish a connection with a recovery coach that will be with them for as long as they need that person in their life. So um, one, it's, it is free other than billing Medicaid, so it's affordable for somebody who is maybe experiencing other high costs of treatment. Um, we help somebody with employment, housing, transportation, getting their children back. We work with probation and parole. Um, we work with educational programs, prevention and intervention. So if their children are in high school or at an appropriate age where we can work with them, we start working with them as soon as we can. So we map out recovery at the whole life process, not just um, abstinence from alcohol and other drugs, but everything else that's involved in someone's life. A recovery um, support system is, is what helps as the basis of that. Thank you. Um, one of the things that Senator Capito talked about was the increase in resources, and I think everybody who spoke talked about how important that increase has been to address this epidemic in your states. Can I just ask each of you to give a, a very brief answer to what's the alternative? If this federal funding goes away, what do you see coming in to replace it, and what will happen in your state to address this epidemic? I'll ask you to go first, Dr. Pierce. Um, well, as a small nonprofit, I'm thinking bake sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's so there at. is no alternative. Right, no. People Stand would lose there. access to treatment, and we would stop developing strong systems of care for addictions. Dr. Cropsey. In Alabama, as a clinician before these federal funds, I had no place to refer people with addiction um, who were uninsured, and so we would go back to those days where people just die. Mr. Stringer. Yeah, Senator, we'd, we would definitely have to take a step backwards, particularly in terms of the number of people that we can serve with evidence-based treatments. Uh, in Washington, one of the most successful ways in which we've increased the ability to provide medication is to provide practices with nurses and care coordinators to support them. The federal funds support those folks. Um, providers wouldn't be able to treat the number of people that they do, and more folks would die. Thank you. Dr. 
Dr. Berry. We will fight as hard as we can, but um, my fear is that we would continue to see the death rate increase exponentially. So it sounds like you would all agree that the progress we've made in addressing this epidemic is directly related to the federal resources that have been available and that we need to make sure that those resources continue to be available if we're going to defeat this epidemic. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.